we got multi-comp running with the M6809 CPU core with 16K of RAM and uh, it worked pretty good. Really good with this card. The placement of all of the connectors down the one edge of the card and the cable at the back for download, which is wouldn't be installed normally anyway, is quite convenient. Now that's really, what I think, what makes this card quite attractive. Uh, everything you would need, USB or a serial port, uh, connection for PS2 mouse and the VGA connector are all down that edge. Uh, quite, quite pretty, nice and convenient. Here's a screenshot showing that 16K of RAM is being used and all of that RAM is inside of the FPGA. What looks like an extra character on the side is just a reflection off the bezel. It's possible to adjust the video timing so that it's a little bit tighter. Um, haven't really tweaked on that with this particular card just got it kind of on the upper left hand corner but you can see it looks pretty good VGA full graphical uh, 80 column 25 characters very nice job that Grant did on this project and very easy to port I just had to change some pin numbers from previous times I've done the same thing Grant's design is pretty modular and when you look at the top level micro micro or multi comp level or microcomputer entity. It has pretty much the I.O. connections, the reset, which we hooked up to one of the buttons, a clock, which is the 50 megahertz clock on the card, video, we've uh, cut it down to six bits from the 16 that are available on the video connector, didn't even do anything with the other pins, although probably they could be driven to zero. Uh, that might make the screen a little bit darker because I think they may be pulled up with weak pull-ups. Horizontal sync, vertical sync, and PS2 clock and data and you can see we were able to type on the screen and get it to work and those are all the pins that come out of the chip and basically go to those the PS2 connector and to the VGA through the resistors in the VGA's case the signals are just basic chip selects kind of stuff you would see on a card if you were wiring the processor and things to the card the CPU in this case is a 6809 based core uh, has all the standard features that it would have, although I don't think the interrupt is, uh, interrupt lines are set up for external interrupts. Probably could be quite easily. Um, the ROM is uh, M6809 Extended Basic, and uh, the address is mapped through this particular ROM entity. Uh, there's a RAM for the internal 16K of RAM, and all the bits are mapped through there. There isn't quite enough room to get much more RAM inside of this chip. I tried to put 20K in and had some difficulties doing it. Um, I could be missing something, but it was a little bit of a challenge to do it. Uh, this thing, as far as how much resources it takes, we'll start that running in the background and look over here. Uh, next item is the display, and the way that Grant has set it up is there's an RGB entity, and it works as if it was a 6850. UART, so you write to it and provide it with inst with instructions that you want to do and it puts the video onto the screen. It's not a memory mapped, uh, well it's memory mapped, but it's more like an I.O. space kind of a mapping. There's no address range here. It's not like you write to individual places. You send it commands to go to different locations. Uh, there's only a single write strobe on the card and the various chip selects for the ROM the video interface and the RAM. That's the only three real chip selects there are. There's a multiplexer that gets set up for reading and the interface takes priority because it would conflict with the ROM space so where it's carved out is, is separated and causes because of the order of operations here. It causes the interface to be if the address is selected to be selected over the ROM. And finally, the only other thing left is a CPU clock, and right now it's set to be, um, I believe it's set to be 4, and that's pretty much it, it uh, which would be 10 megahertz, I believe. I'm not totally sure about that, but I believe that's the case. So it's, it's pretty, pretty uh, tight, and you can go in and see each of the elements if you really cared to. The CPU cores obviously got quite a bit more lines of code. Let's see how many lines it has just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's about 5,000 lines of code. It, it's everything that would have been in a, a 6809 of that generation, uh, except you didn't pay 100 bucks for it like you would have back in the mid 70s when it came out. The text display equally um, has 
similar type of functionality here as well and clocking information and things for changing between PAL and NTSC. Just change a few numbers to change front porches and back porches and scan lines that are blanked and how many active scan lines there are, things like that. Internal RAM is a, mod, is a um, mega wizard element that's inside of the FPGA and you basically select it and tell it what you want and it just does its job. And the last thing is the uh, the basic in ROM and it basically has uh, an array of all the data that goes inside of the ROM and it instantiates the ROM inside of the part. Uh, let's see if it's it's just about done when it's done we'll take a look and see what the total results are. I think we're close to it right there. I'm probably curious how much resources this takes up of this EP4 device. It took up most of the resources in an EP2, but here it takes up 52% of the logic cells. And with 16K of RAM, static RAM, it's taking up 89% of the memory. Uh, again, I'm not really quite sure why I couldn't eke out a little bit more. I tried, but maybe I was doing something wrong with chips locks or something. I'm not quite sure why there. But uh, the pin counts very small, as you saw when you were, we were looking at it. and the total number of registers are very small as well. So if you wanted to implement some other logic inside of the, the part, you got plenty of room to do quite a bit of things. Um, kicking around in my head, making an IDC controller. That might be something that would fit in there nicely. Anyway, hope uh, you enjoyed this quick tour of Multicomp. And uh, we'll put it up link up uh, to our GitHub for where the VHDL code is for this. And all credit, again, goes back to Grant Searle. Um, I hope I'm saying his name right for the original multi-comp design that, that spun off a lot of interest in this from different people. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.